Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. I just want to show you a great technique to sh uh, showcase trends uh, today in, 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 in Power BI. Now, what we're looking at here is a report uh, that uh, I ran through and um, created for a, a workshop uh, that was um, for the Enterprise DNA webinar series. So I run these quite often. Um, and uh, I'll put a link to that uh, workshop uh, down below in the description. So certainly check out the um, the, the entire uh, session. It was a really great one. We had, had many, many uh, people there live, great interaction. Um, so, um, so you'll certainly see that uh, at the full workshop. But what I wanna do is I wanna dive into a very specific part of that workshop that I ran through just to showcase, just to break it out and showcase, you know, this really powerful trend analysis technique. Now, what we're looking at here is in, in, uh, in the top left hand side here. Now, what uh, what we could show, right? We, we, we wanna compare trends, right? We're, in this case, we're comparing quarter on quarter uh, trends, in this case, sales and margins, right? But what you'll find, what you'll find is that if you do this on a daily basis, and you do it for the core calc. So if you do it for, say, your sales analysis or for your, um, and you compare that to a prior quarter, it becomes a very, very busy chart. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to just set up a few things. I'm going to grab my date and I'm going to turn this into a filter so we can actually um, drill into a specific time period. <clears throat> and then I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my date, uh, turn this into a table get rid of that hierarchy. Now, check this out. If I go and grab, so I've got my total sales here, and I've also uh, created a quarter on quarter sales. So we'll just have a quick look at this. So what I've done here is I've calculated sales last quarter, and I've gone and calculate total sales, and then I've changed the context because that's what we do inside of Calculate. We can change the context where I've, uh, and I've changed it by utilizing the date add uh, function, time intelligence function, and we're jumping back one quarter, right? And so I'm gonna drag that into my table. And if I turn this into a line chart, check out that. Really busy, right? This is, a, this, in my view, you know, if we're trying to identify a trend, this isn't really um, helping at all. I mean, it's way too busy. Um, so, you know, with trends, we, we just want averages over time, right? This is too granular, too much information. You know, depend, no, even if we turn it to this chart or, or this chart, I mean, it's just too hard, too hard to see any sort of um, quality trend. Nothing nothing really helps us. So what I did and what, what, what I show, want to showcase is how we can uh, smooth these numbers, how we can, how we can um, get some better analysis from these numbers, numbers that actually showcase trend divergence or, or just any trend um, for that matter. Now what we can do is we can utilize moving averages to uh, overlay um, or, or branch out, um, I like to say, in, into a moving average pattern and um, and that's going to show us we're going to we're going to in incorporate these measures inside a moving average pattern, and that's going to showcase these trends a lot better. And you'll see that very very shortly. So what I've done, I've already set it up here, uh, is I I've done exactly that right. So let's have a look at uh, what the the moving average pattern uh, is here, and it's relatively some relatively straightforward. You'll see here that total sales it appears inside this measure, but we've put it inside an average X. So let's have a look at uh, what average X is doing. Now remember average X is an iterating function. And what we need to do is we need to create a, a place a table inside the function um, that and that we will iterate through. It can be a physical table, like something in your data model, but it can also be a virtual table, and that's the power of these iterating functions, especially average X, right? And so what we wanna do, think about what, what, just think logically, what are we trying to do for a moving average? Well, on any particular day, we're trying to open up a window of, a, 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 of time, and then averaging up all of the results within that window, right? Well, that's exactly what dates and period does for us. It enables us to create a table on on any particular day uh, that um, opens up the window. In this case, we are opening up this window for one month, right? And that's uh, what, uh, there's some uh, input parameters we can place inside the formula, and that's exactly what we've done there. And then, so we're gonna iterate through every single day um, back on, on any day, we're gonna iterate through, uh, say one month prior to that day, and we're gonna calculate this total sales for every single one of those days, and then we're gonna average them up. And then that's gonna give us the one month moving average, right? Okay, so let's have a look at what that looks like just by itself. So I'm gonna go and grab the one month moving average. And you'll see there, it's a much smoother number, right? It's a much, much, much smoother number. And so this in itself, 
showcases a trend a lot better, but we want to showcase it against a results, right? And so I'm going to use exactly, in this case, exactly the same, um, you know, the same pattern of, of, of formula, but instead of total sales, I'm going to sub in my sales last quarter. So this is my time intelligence calc that I just ran through. And so exactly the same, very quickly, you can just copy and paste that, very, very easy. And then if I drag this into um, this visualization, you'll see now that that um, the, I mean, it just looks way better, right? Looks so, so much better uh, in terms of just smoothing the number, identifying the trends. I mean, in this case, you know, there's not a huge difference in trend, not not a significant um, divergence, um, but you know, if, if there was, it would showcase it. So if we jump back to um, you know, to this example here, you know, there's, there's there's lots of different time frames that we can jump into. You know, we can just say change the uh, product that we're looking at to see if there's any um, divergence in trend there. Uh, we could also jump into a particular uh, grouping of customers. So this is you know this is just the power of you know Power BI, right? Just the way that you can dynamically look at all of this different stuff. Um, you know, and it just is going to showcase that trend you know in a lot less busy way. Um, so, so that's the that's the power of this technique. Okay, I'm going to round those off. Remember, this is this uh, this um, this report rather that um, that I've created here was for a, a workshop which was um, part of the Enterprise DNA webinar series. I'll leave a link uh, below. Uh, in the description where uh, you can um, <clears throat> watch the entire replay of that. I've covered so many things in that uh, workshop. It was, an, it, was, it was a really, really great session, so highly recommend checking that out. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you can utilize this technique, right? Showing trends is a really powerful analytical, you know, is, is, is just anal an analysis, right? Is, um, it's just a really good way to show, show analysis. Um, show really good insights um, in your Power BI reports. So this is a good technique to utilize for that. If you like the content, um, certainly throw us a like on the video. Um, really, really appreciate it. If you want to learn more about Power BI, if you're just starting out, more about Power BI, more about um, DAX formula, then I highly recommend checking out um, my ultimate beginner's guide to Power BI and to DAX. Uh, at Enterprise DNA online, uh, there'll be a link below uh, in the description to those as well. Um, so, so certainly check those out. Um, plenty to learn about all the all the beginner stuff that you have to get your head around um, in Power BI um, before you move into more advanced things and, and start doing really compelling work in Power BI. So, um, so I, I uh, distribute those for free. So, so certainly check um, check out those resources. Okay, all the best with this one. Take care. See you soon.